Wildcats, how are you guys doing today? All right, well, thanks for joining me. Um, I know that we're meeting virtually, and so since we're meeting virtually, I figured I would stick myself virtually into one of my favorite places to be. So I am hanging out with my friends, Miss Coleman and Miss Moore, in the Friends Cafe. Because y'all know me, I'm all about the coffee, right? But I wanted to say thanks for joining me. And today we are going to talk about book care and parts of the book. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about uh, the basic things of book care. What we're going to go over today is keeping your book dry, how to use your book or hold your book properly, not letting pets and small animals play with the book, don't try to fix the book yourself, and number five, if something should happen, bring the book to me, okay? All right, y'all, this is South Mississippi, okay? We cannot predict the weather. Um, one of my favorite sayings is, if you don't like the weather in Mississippi, stick around for 15 minutes because it's going to be different. I mean, and it's super true. How many times have you gotten on the bus in the morning and it was freezing cold and then you got home and you had to run in and change into shorts, because you were sweating to death, right? So we can't predict the weather. And sometimes when it rains, we use whatever we have on hand to keep us dry, even our book bags and our backpacks, okay? And sometimes if your library book or your workbook or your school papers are in that backpack, they're gonna get wet too. So if this happens, make sure when you get home that you take everything out of your backpack. You have to let your backpack dry and you need to let your papers dry and you need to kind of spread them out, okay? So spread them out, set them on a counter or on a place on the floor where they're not gonna get stepped on and just give them a couple hours to dry, okay? Now the next thing is when you're reading a book, you always hold the book from the sides and you never, ever, ever fold the book in half, okay? Sometimes we just wanna hold the book with one hand, so we fold the book backwards and in half, like backwards. Well, we can't do this. And the reason for that is when you do that, you damage the spine. So let me go ahead and shut this off for just a second. And I'm gonna show you, see this part of the book, this is just put together with glue, okay? Now it's a very strong glue, but it is glue nonetheless. So a lot of times if you take the book back, these hardback books, the spine doesn't bend, but when you bend it all the way back, you hear that cracking sound? Okay, so that is me busting the, the, the seams and that is me cracking the glue in the back. And what I'm doing is every time I go too far, it makes the glue weaker and weaker, okay? So we definitely do not want to do that to our books. We want to hold our books properly and keep our books um, in, in the best condition that we can for as long as we can, right? Because we're sharing our books with other students and a book that you read in kindergarten, by the time you get to the fifth grade, there's another kindergartner that's going to be reading that same book, okay? All right, so the next thing, ooh, yowza, okay? Sometimes pets and little ones just don't understand the value of items. So be sure not to leave your book just lying around where tiny little hands or tiny little teeth can get them. Okay, um, I know a lot of times, especially these graphic novels, they got these bright colors and I mean, just little kids just hone in on them. But if you put it up on a higher counter or on a higher table where they can't reach it, they're less likely to damage the book. Okay, oh boy, I don't know what she was doing, but... I doubt she was trying to repair a book. Um, but if something should happen, y'all, um, it's not a big deal. It really isn't. But please be responsible. Do the responsible thing and bring the book back to me. Um, you're not going to get in trouble. You're not going to get fussed at. Most of the time, I can fix the book. Okay, Don't try to fix it at home. Um, I do appreciate the effort, but sometimes I have to undo what was done at home so that I could properly fix the book. I have this really cool machine. 
um, that I got last year and it um, melts a special glue strip um, and it fixes books like that okay so if by some chance I cannot repair the book uh, you may be responsible ha for having to pay for it but um, keep in mind a lot of our books are you know paperbacks and they're not super expensive but even though they're not super expensive we still want to be super responsible and take care of those books okay so now we're going to talk about parts of a book uh wow so when i was looking around for um little visuals for this i found um this diagram and that was my reaction wow um inner hinge free and paper pass down turn in headband headband square yo that's too much okay um those are the parts of the books that like uh book publishers or book writers um those are the kinds of uh details that we get into when we're really trying to break down the parts of the books but for us we're just going to go over these basic parts okay Here's my screen so that i can cover the parts of the book with you face to face okay so you saw from that other diagram that there's a whole bunch of different parts of the book that we're really not going to go into that much detail um, but we're going to talk about nine parts of the book today okay we're going to go over front cover back cover spine title author illustrator illustrations call number and barcode Okay, now the front cover and the back cover are kind of the most obvious parts of the book because you've got your front cover, and you've got your back cover. Okay, now if you hear somebody talk about a hardback or paperback, it just is referring to the cover. Some covers are a lot harder than others. This is a hardback. This Bart George book is a paperback. You see it's a lot, it's not as hard. Okay, so they call it a paperback and a hardback. Okay, so the front part of the book is the front cover. The back part of the book is the back cover. The middle where the front cover and the back cover meet is called the spine. Now, the front cover, the back cover, and the spine, they don't just have the job of covering the book and keeping the book together. They usually will have a lot of important information on them. Okay, the title for example, is going to be found on the front cover. Now you can often find the title on the spine as well. Okay, however, sometimes the spine of the book is too narrow. Like we're going back to our Bart George book. See, there's not enough room there to print the title. But on books that have thicker spines, you can usually find the title and the author's name. Okay, see how there's plenty of room? They've got the title here, the author's name here. Okay, so the title can be found on the front cover as well as the spine. Now, also on the front cover, they will have the author's name, who it's written by, and they will also have the illustrator's name. Can anybody tell me what the illustrator's job is? That's right. The illustrator's job is to do the illustrations. Now, illustration is just another word for picture, okay? It's a fancy word. I tell you guys all the time, grown-ups like to have fancy words for simple things. Illustration is one of them, okay? So the person, the artist that drew these pictures is called the illustrator. The picture itself is called the illustration. Now, the last parts of the book that we're going to talk about are very specific to library books. If you go to Walmart, Books A Million, Barnes and Nobles, your books won't have these things, okay? But they are book uh, they are parts of the book that are specific to books that we house in the library, okay? Now, the one thing that we're going to talk about, the first thing that we're going to talk about is the call number. Now, this book here is a non-fiction book okay it is historical that's why it's in the 900s all right um libraries have anywhere between 000 and 999 okay and each one of those numbers represents a specific genre or sub subtype 
of nonfiction book. And can anybody tell me what nonfiction means? That's right. It means it is true. Okay. Fiction books are not true. And our fiction books have a special kind of spine label that has the author's last name. Now, some places will have the uh, first three letters of the author's last name. But in order to find things a little more easily at the Woodley Library, Miss Seal puts the red sticker on there with the, just the first letter of the author's last name. Okay, so these spine labels are called call numbers. Okay, this one is the nonfiction call number for the book, We Will Not Be Silent. Okay, and then the author's last name is on the spine label for fiction books. Okay, now the last thing that we're going to talk about on the parts of the book is the um, barcode. Okay, now if you go pick up a box of macaroni and cheese, you'll notice that your macaroni and cheese has a barcode too, like this one, okay? It's not the same kind of barcode that we put on our library books. Our library books will say Woodley Elementary, and that lets us know, um, you know, if you went from Woodley to another school in the district and you forgot to leave your book and you bring your teacher the book, they can just see that it's one of our books and she, she can send it back to me. Um, I've actually had a library book that I just had to send back to Buckatuna because I found a library book that had a Buckatuna um, barcode on it. So this tells you, I keep pointing to the wrong side of the book, it's over here. Okay, this tells you um, the school that the book belongs to and this is the barcode that I scan um, when I check out a book. Now, a lot of times we get a little confused because you might have three or four copies of the same book. And a lot of times you will bring me a book that you accidentally swapped with your neighbor who had the same book. Um, and then when I scan it, it pops up your neighbor's name and not your name. That's because the, when that book is checked out to you, that special book is checked out to you, it is linked to your name in my system. So let's say you and your good friend next to you in class notice that, hey, you have the same book, and then you accidentally, when you got up and walked out, you picked up their book. The book is exactly the same. You go home and you read it. You come in in the morning to swap your book out for a new book. And then when I scan it, it has your friend's name on it. So um, make sure that you keep up with your book. But if that happens, we have to swap them back before you can check the book back in. Okay. So those are the nine parts of the books that I want you guys to learn today. Okay. We'll go over them again. Front cover. Back cover spine, the author, who's the person that wrote the book, the illustrator, who's the person that draws the pictures, the illustration, which is the pictures itself, and the different kind of spine labels, whether it's a call number or a fiction spine label, and then the barcode on the back. Okay? All right. Awesome to see you guys again. I hope you're learning lots. I can't wait to see you again in my library. Until then, peace out.